Greetings, everyone. David Lawrence here welcoming you to our April episode of Grad TV. Today, we have a spirited debate about graduate school issues. We talk about an important aspect of graduate school and celebrate more graduate student accomplishments. We'll start today's episode with a panel discussion. Last week, I had the opportunity to moderate a conversation on some issues that affect the graduate school at large and some solutions that can be taken to address them. We are winding down toward another academic year here at Morgan. And today, we wanted to discuss some of the graduate issues that are plaguing our community. We have assembled a panel of upcoming graduates to discuss their times here at Morgan and some things that we need to see in order to improve our graduate programs. I'll let the panelists introduce themselves, starting with Mr. Muhammad. Hi, my name is Muhammad Sharif Uddin. Oh, I'm a doctoral student of Urban Educational Leadership Program. Zara? My name is Zara Williams. I'm in the uh, Faculty of Architecture and Planning, and I'm a master's student. In Paris. Paris Adkins Jackson, doctoral candidate in the College of Liberal Arts Program in Psychometrics. Thank you all for joining us on the show today. And first off, I want to start talking about the big, um, one of the biggest issues has been faculty involvement. Um, um, this year, we attempted to get our Graduate Writing Center off the ground, but we hit some hurdles in that. Paris, I know you have been one of the major movers in getting that off the ground. Can you talk about some of the hurdles that you experienced with that as far as faculty goes? Sure. So one of the major concerns graduate students have had about writing at Morgan in general is that students need assistance transitioning. Some of our students are professional students and are returning to school and so are not in the groove of academic writing. And many of our students have not experienced graduate school and need assistance writing at this particular level. So we needed a space to be able to transition students to the place they needed to, to not only write for their classes, but be able to write manuscripts for publishing, to be able to produce theses and dissertations. There are a myriad of opportunities to write at Morgan State. So we really needed a space to grow. And our current writing center cannot offer that. The tutors that are provided are often graduate students um, who cannot assist other graduate students at the level of writing that they need to be at. So we specifically requested workshops, individuals to come in to work specifically with graduate level students around manuscripts, thesis, dissertation, classroom assignments. And then we also ask for our own space to learn through a graduate center, whether that be through workshops or a different location on campus or working with the current writing center. We were quite open to whatever that may look like. And we were told that that is not a feasible opportunity for graduate students at Morgan State at this time. So we're left with the same dilemma. Students are struggling to write and we don't have assistance. And Zara, um, you being a master's student like myself, what's, another, what's one thing in addition to lack of writing resources that you've also faced in your time here? Well, I think in the case of architecture and planning, it's a little bit different. They're professional programs. Um, so for some people, this may be their first professional uh, master's degree. Um, and a, a lot of the students who are coming into the program the outcome that they're hoping for is a graduate degree which will contribute to the process of licensure and registration as um, a licensed architect. So with that in mind, what that means is students have uh, a much wider range of goals that they want coming into the program. Because some folks like myself are considering the track of an academician. And the infrastructure is not there at all for that. So it kind of piggybacks on what Paris is saying, because if a faculty is professionally focused um, and the majority of the tenured and sessional prof uh, professors who are in the program are also focused on the practice of architecture. If you have any goals for a career beyond that in the academy, those cannot, uh, those goals really can't be met um, in any way. And, and that covers uh, 
your thoughts on practice, thoughts on uh, writing and publishing. However, we do have one one professor in the entire faculty faculty who I think can can help you um, one. with that. O only there there is one professor, um, Dr. Mohammed Garipour, who is actively engaging students, regardless of whether they're interested in practicing professionally or going further into the academy. Um, in publishing, writing papers. I'm going through that process with him right now, and I know that there's two students in landscape architecture as well, so he's even crossing out of architecture. He's aggressively trying to, um, trying to see that avenue through. Now, um, you did touch a major, you did touch a major point. I want to come back to that, but I want to bring um, Muhammad into this, I want to bring Muhammad into it. Um, Light Parish, you also are defending your your um, dissertation this academic year, bringing in your um, dissertation with some obstacles you've faced yourself. Thank you, David. This is a very tough question, actually. <laughs> uh, All right. I'm, I didn't mean to try to make it yeah, tough, so as apologies. As a student, you know, we want to do research, we want to write papers, and we want to publish it. Mm -hmm. This is our aim on all doctor students, also, also the faculty. So, and we are here, suppose me, I am studying here after 20 years of my master's. Wow. Again. So it, uh, it is a long distance, so I have to start restart again. So uh, the Paris and the grads council are really uh, focusing on writing center. This is really important to help mm -hmm. us. And, 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 and I'm in the school of education, you know, in education is a field where uh, everything is coming new, like technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. New things are coming, new research are coming every day. But we also like to, we also want to like uh, take part in this research field of teachers. And most of us, especially we are who the international students, our writing capability is little lower because of our background is not English. Yes. So it is really very, very supportive and very, very helpful and very, very, I can say it is badly needed for us for a writing center, by a sophisticated writing center. Mm -hmm. And you know, and you know, to like you said, twenty years since you've been, and of course, technology's come in big since what nineteen ninety eight when you got your last master's. I'll assume. Um, besides the master's, how would you say writing has come a long way since you got your master's? I'm sorry, can you repeat? How how far would you say writing has come in between your master's and your doctoral? Yeah, this is a huge difference in writing uh, in doctoral level in each and every courses. Uh, the assignment is not like the master's courses. Mm -hmm. Your assignment is like a uh, research article, mm -hmm. five, six, eight pages. So you have to, uh, 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 there should be deep thinking and uh, correct grammatically and linguistically should be correct. And you know, I, I mentioned before as an international student, it is very difficult for me to choose the appropriate word. Mm -hmm. I can remember, you know, one of my last paper I wrote one word valid in uh, 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 philosophy course. My professor underlined and uh, told me that uh, uh, in philosophy it has another meaning. You can't use this word here. Right. So you have to know all the things. So as an international student, we we are very neat uh, in need for a writing center, and it is a huge difference from masters to mm -hmm. doctoral level. The writing in a masters level, this is just we can say the course course by course. Here is also course by course in doctoral level, but here is more on mm -hmm. research writing. In every course, in every assignment, you have to write something in deep from your own, from researching, from the from other resources, from the textbook, everything included, from primary sources, mm -hmm. secondary sources, from lecture. So it is very sophisticated and highly uh, high deep writing, I think. But it's the standard, is what yeah, we should standard, know. Right. That's what we should know. And yes. I think that's important to emphasize. Um, there's this phrase that I really like, and it's the soft bigotry of low expectations. Mm. And the reason why I bring that up is I think that what we are asking is that our expectation from our academic studies while we are here at Morgan is that the uh, rigor that we are put through, the academic rigor that we are put through, and the expectations that are put before us are the standard that everyone else right. in the nation at, you know, good, 
research institutions because right. we are supposed to be what a preeminent mm -hmm. research Ur institution. The the preeminent urban institution in the state of Maryland. <laughs> Thank you. So 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 our expectation is that the standard that we are held at should be equal mm -hmm. across the nation. Good. You know, and I, I I'm not saying that I don't understand a hierarchy of institutions. Um, we we know that that exists, but there there's a standard. Um, body of knowledge and a standard way of operating mm -hmm. that when we seek employment, be it professional or academia, right. um, there's an expectation that we understand mm -hmm. what that knowledge is supposed to be. And that includes something that I should have mentioned is the historiography of our disciplines. Mm -hmm. One thing that is lacking at Morgan is that Academia does not push the historiography of mm. the disciplines. So what you just brought up, that use of the word valid in philosophy. So n now we are expected to be interdisciplinary. That's the word that people are saying. So while I'm in architecture, you know, I have some human geography background, some planning, et cetera, et cetera. And th the same can be said for both of you. You're pulling on different disciplines. Right. You know, I sat in uh, Paris's uh, defense and my notes were all over the place in terms of like, okay, she's, you know, she's clearly in psychology here. She's clearly in sociology, social work. Like, so. How many if, more topics did you, did you cover in that exactly. presentation? And so we have to also understand the development of how those disciplines came about because that informs our use of language, mm -hmm. structure, and how we write because they all have different requirements, different annotated bibliography requirements, mm -hmm. you know, different, everything is different. And, and for us not to know that and to go out into the professional world, mm -hmm. um, it questions the credibility of, mm -hmm. of this experience that yes, we're having. I would like to add something to Jara. Go ahead. Suppose as a student, uh, when I search some uh, uh, journal articles, when I read out uh, some articles, I become jealous. Mm -hmm. How nicely <laughs> they write. How can I write like them? Mm -hmm. Wow. How can I organize like them? So mm -hmm. I hope that our institution, our beloved institution will help us to do that. Mm -hmm. And there is one, um, we're going to try and wrap things up, and I want to finish on this topic. Zara and both pairs have brought this up. Um, graduate involvement. Definitely want to see more graduate involvement on the level of appointment boards. I was on Twitter recently, and someone said, why do you have students trying to select your boards? Because that's just inadequately absurd. And I had to say, pause. Wait a minute. As a as a super senior, fifth year student, I was on a dean's I was on a dean selection committee. So to say that that's out of place. So for me to say that's out of place, that's a very well an understatement. But for but for graduate representation on faculty and tenure, that's a very big step. That's a very big step. And I just want each of you guys, real briefly, just to say, in your own work excuse me, in your own words, how big that does mean for us going forward as a graduate, as graduate students. Well, I can start us off and also say that uh, the Graduate Student Council, which uh, both Zara and Sharif Muhammad um, sit on, we've been trying to get students on these committees, both the hiring and the tenure and promotion. And there's a new tenure and promotion policy effective at Morgan right now. But the major problem has been that our, family, our faculty, well, they are our family too, they are limited. Mm. So many of the graduate faculty we have were not hired as graduate faculty with the exception of some programs like right. business and education and even architecture. Many of our programs were faculty who were undergraduate who were just allowed to teach graduate students. So not only do they not have the skill to update their materials to the rigor that's necessary for graduate students, but they lack the ability to mentor graduate students. And mm. we often have a lot of clashes in personality and behavior because they're used to having to discipline a 21-year-old and tell them, no, you have to come to class every day and do every assignment, where we're saying, no, we want to go deeper on this topic. I disagree with you, but that should not mean my grade suffers because we have intellectual disagreement. And so we need to be able to be on these committees, especially tenure right. and promotion, to say, 
this faculty member has a history of clashes with students. They have a history of taking emotional problems out on their grades. Why are they being allowed to stay in our program and teach? And we should be at the hiring table going, do you have the capacity to work with graduate students? What are your examples of working with graduate students before they come and then we allow them to teach graduate classes and we have the same problems. clashes and issues. Mm -hmm. So if I like to share with uh, Paris, I would like to say like that. If we, uh, if we are in hiring committee, this is also a great learning for us. Yeah. So we yes. were in mm -hmm. doctoral program. Mm -hmm. One day also we will face this problem, mm -hmm. face this board. So we can prepare ourselves. So how can we do? How can we handle these issues? This is also a learning for us. Definitely. For us. Mm -hmm. Very well said because. Even when, because I have a feeling that at some point you all would like to become faculty potentially with colleges and universities. I said potentially, so don't give me that up, Paris. But if you potentially want to work at college or university, this would go a long way towards you being on a committee yourself. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. But. No, not at all. Uh, I think uh, there's two points that I want to make. Mm -hmm. That is the, the concept of a citizen expert. Mm -hmm. So. While we are graduate students, mm -hmm. um, the, the, the average uh, graduate age at Morgan is quite mature. Mm -hmm. So you're speaking about people who actually do have uh, teaching experience, mm -hmm. yes. case in point, right? Yes. <laughs> right here. Exactly. Um, exactly. And, and people who also have had professional careers, also right. case in point yes. here. Uh, so I think there's a fundamental shift in the attitude that faculty needs to have about engagement with graduate students mm -hmm. and why it's necessary to have them at the table. Because what we can provide beyond insight to interaction with students is expectation from previous institutions mm -hmm. as we all have multiple degrees prior right. to coming here. Um, and so we, we, do, we do have insight to that. There are faculty here who went from undergrad to doctoral and are now tenured faculty. So that means that we actually have more insight to more institutions than they do. Um, in addition to that, uh, the, the underlying th kind of theme that I hear in a, in a lot of the comments that we're making is the missing opportunity for mentorship mm -hmm. at every aspect. Mm -hmm. And historically, university used to be an opportunity to it used to be finishing school, right? Mm, Historically, right. you were completing the education um, for certain people right. um, who had the privilege of, of coming here. And so this should be an opportunity to mentor all of the levels that we need to be involved in. Definitely. A special thanks to Paris, Zara, and Muhammad for their participation in our discussion. In order to make it through school, you have to have the proper funding in place. Funding was one topic MSGSA members asked us to cover from our needs assessment last year. With that in mind, I sat down with the financial manager for the School of Graduate Studies, Sean Simpson, to discuss graduate funding. Hi, my name is Sean Simpson. I'm the financial manager with the School of Graduate Studies here at Morgan State University. I'm here to talk about scholarships and grants and funding opportunities uh, within the School of Graduate Studies. Our funds fall into three primary categories, and that is the scholarship and grant, the assistantship, and the fellowship. I'll explain all three. The scholarship and grant is self-explanatory. It's tuition coverage only. It does not pay a university fee. It does not pay room and board. It does not pay books, and it does not pay meals. However, it does pay tuition in three credit increments, and it pays up to nine credits. So it divides it out as three, six, or nine credits. Nine credits is the max. And that's per semester, so you, the maximum award will be 18 credits for two semesters. Uh, the next source in line is the assistantship, and it's practically the same thing as the scholarship and grant as far as paying tuition. It pays three, six, nine credits. And no university fees as well, no room and board. However, on top of the tuition award that you receive, you will actually be offered a position or an opportunity to work within your program or your department. You receive a contracted amount and uh, you are considered a student employee. If you're a master level student, you get that your, your contract 
typically starts September 1st and it ends May 31st. If you're a doctoral level student, your contract starts September 1st and it ends August 31st of the following year. The last fund source is the fellowship. It, it is a very strict fund source out of, out of the three. Uh, it is very similar to the assistantship where it pays your tuition up to nine credits and three credit increments. However, you do work and you, get, you also receive a contracted amount. The difference between the assistantship and the fellowship is that with an assistantship, it does not matter if you're an international student or a domestic student or a permanent resident. However, with the fellowship, you must be a U.S. citizen or a permanent resident. The international students cannot receive fellowships. They only can receive assistantships. Another difference between the two is that the assistantship pays you every two weeks, whereas the fellowship pays you once a month. A lot of students get confused with uh, funding opportunities from the School of Graduate Studies uh, with financial aid. Uh, financial aid, we have a whole separate office for financial aid, and it's for undergrad and graduate level students, and it's typically loans through our federal government or other funding sources. Uh, funding through me or through the graduate School of Graduate Studies is actually scholarships and grants, so it's money you actually do not have to pay back. Uh, but again, it only pays tuition. It does not pay room and board, university fees, and uh, books, etc. Whereas financial aid, there is a possibility where they can pay uh, your meal ticket and uh, your books, or you'll receive a refund and you can uh, contribute it towards uh, room and board, meal tickets, and uh, books. And if you have any other questions, you can feel free to call me here at the office. It's 443 885 3185. Here's additional information you need to know about funding. To reach the application, log on to the university website at www.morgan.edu. On the home page, hover over the admissions tab and click on the second option, graduate admissions. Once on the graduate study page, look to your left and click on graduate aid and funding. On the graduate aid and funding page, scroll down until you see the scholarship link. Click on the link and complete the brief application. The application is open from February 1st to May 31st for fall semesters and from October 1st to December 31st for spring semesters. Students are selected for funding based on completing the general application in addition to being recommended by their academic department. This was a recent change made by the School of Graduate Studies to ensure that all funding for the graduate school stays within. So make sure you contact your coordinator and ask about graduate funding opportunities in your program. We should note that you are ineligible for funding if you're a non-degree seeking student or pursuing a second master's or doctoral degree at Morgan. Please know that tuition increases affect the School of Graduate Studies budget and how much can be awarded. Therefore, all U.S. citizens and permanent residents are encouraged to fill out the FAFSA. In addition to the phone number mentioned earlier, Mr. Simpson is also available by email at sean.simpson at morgan.edu to answer any questions or concerns you may have. Mr. Simpson kindly reiterates that funding is limited, so make sure you apply as soon as possible. Now we would like to salute members of our graduate family that are making strides beyond Morgan and Baltimore. First, congratulations to all students that have successfully defended their thesis or dissertation. We know this is no small feat and a major hurdle on the road to graduation. Our next congratulations goes to journalism student Janae Reese. She recently completed a project as part of Project 2030 for the United Nations Foundation. Janae was one of 20 students who took part in the program and one of three to represent Morgan. Congratulations, Janae. Our MSGSA Vice President Khadija Ali Coleman presented in Ohio earlier this month at the McDonough Leadership Conference. She presented on the topic of conflict response. Congratulations, Khadija. Lastly, we acknowledge Ms. Issa Gonzalez, the social work master's student due to graduate this May, is moderating a mental health panel at the Roots and Races Festival on Saturday, April 28th at 5 p.m. For more information on the festival, log on to www.rootsracesfestival.com. Come out and support a member of our graduate family. Before we close out our episode today, here come some announcements. 
Our graduate commencement is Thursday, May 17th at 9.30 a.m. in the Murphy Fine Arts Building. Rehearsal for graduates will take place on Wednesday, May 16th at 5 p.m. in the Murphy Fine Arts Building. Tickets for the ceremony will be given at this time. Please note that by order of the University Fire Marshal that all attendees must have a ticket. This includes infants and small children. For more information on commencement, please visit the commencement website at commencement.morgan.edu. Interested in being part of next year's executive board? Be on the lookout for an announcement in your emails coming soon on how to run for office. This concludes the April episode of Grad TV. To stay informed, like us on Facebook and visit our site on Blackboard by searching Morgan State Graduate Student Association. You can also email us at msgsa at morgan.edu. Thanks again for joining us. I'm David Lawrence, and we'll see you next month for more Grad TV. Bye for now.